Are you ready to up-level your sales game? Well, here is a gift for you. It is the Mastering the Sales Conversation mini training. This training gives you my proven step-by-step approach to sales so that you can go from that overwhelmed and intimidated approach that you have to sales to feeling confident and leading a conversation so that you easily guide somebody to hiring you. You can get it right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash mastering. This is my gift to you. Go grab it now. sales conversations make you feel awkward or pushy, it's time to ditch the outdated salesy strategies. Your guide, Nikki Roush, will show you how to combine kindness with selling skills to meet your prospects where they are, and in the process, how to up-level your influence and income. Learn how to earn business easily and effortlessly. Here's Nikki. Welcome, and thank you for listening to The Sales Maven Show. I'm your host, Nikki Roush. I am your own personal sales maven here to empower you with actionable strategies that you can use to enhance your sales conversation. Today, we're diving into a common challenge that I think many of us as business owners face, which is how to effectively navigate client meetings and interactions where there are budget constraints. So this came up from a coaching session. Uh, One of my Sales Maven Society members had asked for some coaching around this. And I thought, ah, this might be a good topic because I think this is something many of us run into, especially in the corporate scenario. So if you're selling into corporate, you know, people are always talking about budget. And in this particular case, the way the meeting got started was the contact that she was having her meeting with started the meeting by saying, there's no budget. Have you ever had that? (laughs) Somebody says to you, there's no budget. Oh, okay. It kind of puts you on your back foot, but you don't have to. So there are some things that you can do to set yourself and the prospect up for success and maybe potentially earn their business. Now, realistically, there will be challenges. There will be times where they're just not a right fit, right? Because if they're not willing or able to pay your fee structure, they're not really a prospect. You got a bless and release. But in this particular case, you probably want to do some checking before you do that. So here are some things that I would suggest in that initial meeting. So you might say something like when somebody says there's no budget, or you know, we have budget constraints, you could say, let's continue our conversation to find out what might best serve you. And then we can discuss possible next steps for working on how to address any of the current budget issues. So we got to find out like, do they even have a need? Do they have a want? Is there an interest here? If the, there's no budget, is there a way to like give you the kiss off? Then they'll just say like, there's no use continuing this conversation. But realistically, they got onto a call with you, right? They they scheduled a meeting with you. So there must be some interest there. There has to be something that motivated them to get onto that call with you, to have that meeting. So again, you don't just like let it go. We check to see, is there more that we could do here? So this is the next step is to think about, can you ask the right question to uncover what was their motivation behind setting up the meeting? And the way that you would frame that is you would say, you could say, I'm curious, or is it okay to ask? That's a softening phrase, by the way. What prompted you to set this meeting up now? So this gives them an opportunity to reveal, you know, are they just gathering data or like for future budgeting? Or is there some other thing that they're looking for from you? Or were they forced into having the meeting with you, which can sometimes happen in corporate, right? If you have somebody who their boss has said, like, have a meeting with this person, which actually was the case with my with my client. Um, she has a good relationship with the boss and the boss wanted, you know, a few of the team members to meet with her and learn more about what she has to offer. So that was the start of, you know, the person saying like, there's no budget. 
Now, when you get into those types of situations, what can sometimes happen is those people are what I refer to as prisoners, right? They were kind of forced into this. They didn't they didn't do it because they had an interest necessarily. They did it because their boss told them they had to. So when you have prisoners <laughs> in a call with you, it's important that you kind of maintain and try to build relationship with that person. So one of the ways that you can do that is you can ask them, um, what would make this a good use of your time? So if they say, oh, you know, our my boss, you know, made me set up this meeting with you or so then so you want to build rapport with the prisoner in this case. So you would say, uh, what would make this a good use of your time today? And then wait and see what they have to say. Because it shows a level of respect and it shows that you're not trying to just like push through. Um, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna try to do what you can to make the meeting meaningful. And it's a good opportunity to to build rapport with that person. And, you know, depending on how that goes, that may be the catalyst to like loosen the, like I'm a prisoner and now they become a learner. Now they're interested in what it is that you have to say. And then possibly they become an advocate or an ambassador for you within the organization as to why, you know, what it is that you offer might be a really great fit. So be willing to check that out. Do you know how to recognize and act on a buying signal? I have a gift that is going to teach you the 17 buying signals so that you're ready when you get them to take action and move somebody to the next part of the sales conversation. You can get this right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash maven. Go grab it now. Now, if somebody else has initiated, you know, again, this meeting, so in this particular case that I've given you, it's like the boss has initiated the meeting. Remember, you also need to maintain that relationship with the boss or whoever the person was. So you probably want to reach back out to them after you have the meeting and, you know, touch base and you could you could give kind of an overview of like what was discussed. And then you might ask this question to the originator of the meeting. Uh, was there anything specific you did want for us to accomplish? Now you could ask them that prior to the meeting too, which I do recommend. But if you didn't get a chance to, you can ask it after. But if you get a chance before, you could say, what would, what, what would you like for us to accomplish in this meeting? Because that will give you some indication too, so that when you do do a follow-up with the person that initiated the meeting, um, you have an opportunity to talk about like that you met that requirement or maybe why you didn't. That can happen. <laughs> and then the other thing that I would suggest is think about having a next time to chat. So if it truly is a budget issue, well, budgets change. So one of the things you might want to ask is when do your, like, when does your budget roll over? Like, are you budgeting for the quarter? Are you budgeting for the year? And then when would that roll over? So find out that information. And then once they give you that information, that's a great opportunity for you to encourage a next time to chat. Like, can we go ahead and schedule a time to chat, you know, when you're in your budgeting process or when you're collecting the information for what you're going to put into your budget? Can we schedule a call to see if what I offer, you know, is a good fit for that round of budgets? And then get the call scheduled, even if it's six months, eight months out, why not? The thing about, I think a lot of times with us as business owners is we're thinking like, oh, well, that person, you know, they're not going to buy this year. But the thing is like, <laughs> this year goes fast. I don't know about you, but every month I think, where did the month go? So that, that opportunity is going to come back around faster than you think. So you might as well schedule a time to chat. Now, if they don't schedule a follow-up call with you, and as long as you know or gotten the information as to when the budget is going to restart, then you can send them 
a message, you know, prior to them, like the budget rolling over, because there's got to be some planning time. So you might send a message to them, the person that you had the actual meeting with. Now we're also going to keep in touch with the person who initiated the meeting. So in this case, the boss, but for the person that you had the meeting, you might send them a message, you know, ask how they're doing or how, you know, how business has been since you last spoke, reference your conversation, because if it's been eight months, they might've forgotten. So you need to reference that. And then you might write, I have some suggestions that might be beneficial for your organization. Would you be open to scheduling a time to discuss these? And then you give them the, you know, in case you like this idea, here are a few possible times. That's what I call my three times language. So you give them a few time slots and then you could say, and if you prefer something else, you're welcome to send a time that works best for you. Now you have a message that's a follow-up. And the thing that might pique their interest is that you have some suggestions that might be beneficial, right? So if you did a good job on that first meeting and building rapport and they're now open to having a second meeting with you, awesome. You have a better chance of earning their business. If they're still like, no, don't call us, we'll call you, bless and release and move on. Now, I would also though encourage you to stay in contact with your primary contact throughout the that period of time. So you might even send a very similar to mes- message to them. Like I have a few suggestions uh, for your organization and I'm wondering, is there any way I can support you and your team right now? How can I be of assistance? Like show that you are engaged that you're committed to their success and that you're committed to their relationship. And these key strategies, these little tiny like tweaks to maybe how you handle these, like there's no budget or there's budget constraint issues will keep that ball rolling oftentimes. And again, if it doesn't keep the the ball rolling, bless and release, like move on, go work with somebody who is expressing interest, you know, go find an organization similar to this, organization that would maybe be more open to your message and your the benefits that you can bring to their team. Like you don't have to chase. That's my that's my thought here. All right. So as we wrap up this episode, I hope these these little tips and strategies were helpful for you. And just remember it's all about asking insightful questions. It's about engaging the person that you're in conversation with as effectively as possible and maintaining ongoing communication. And these things will set you up for success to hopefully earn their business in the future. Even if it's a month from now, even if it's from a year from now, because I promise you, you're going to need clients a year from now, just like you need clients right now. So it's okay to like set yourself up for getting a client in a year um, if, if that's a possibility. All right. I am wishing you continued success. If you found this episode helpful, would you please share it and or leave a review? Let somebody else know about the podcast. I'm so grateful when new listeners find my podcast because of an existing listener. That is super flattering. Thank you so much. And in the meantime, if there's some way I can serve you or your business, please reach out. It would be my honor to support you as you navigate your own sales situations and challenges. All right. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks for listening to Sales Maven. Visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com slash maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills. Are you ready to increase your confidence in your sales conversations? I have a gift for you that is going to show you exactly how to do that. It is my closing the sale ebook. It's all about leveling up your confidence, giving you language to use, how to seamlessly move somebody through the sales process. And you can get it right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash maven. Go grab it.